Hello everyone and welcome at It's Life. Last month you could uh, hear about the security. Today we will dive into the data world. Uh, my name is Bartek and I'm a software engineer in PGS Software. Um, PGS Software is a company based in Poland who builds custom uh, programs, custom um, software for our clients. Uh, we did this uh, for last 16 years. Today, we'll be talking about the road to becoming a data-driven enterprise. Um, first, we'll talk about one of the key uh, aspects of data-driven organizations, which is the data culture. Then we will focus on one of the uh, key um, pillars for the data culture, the technologies around it. Then I will tell you a story about the company that uh, used these technologies to reinforce their path to the data-driven world. And last but not least, we will go through some takeaways. So why we are talking about the data culture when we are in the topic we had the data-driven enterprise? Um, the key aspect of every data-driven enterprise is the culture of the people. So you can have all the tools around it, all the, all the new fancy stuff which comes up uh, every month but without the data culture, you will not achieve the success and you will not be um, data-driven in itself. Data, data culture, I like to define it as the three key things around it. First of all, you need to have a data. Without the good, high-quality data, there is no way to achieve the supremacy and there is no way that people will trust you when you deliver uh, the value and when you deliver the results. We need to remember that inside of our organizations, the data needs to be accessed daily. So this is why we call it data driven because the, not only the CEO level uh, people are mm, using it, data are used also in daily work of every employee. So access to the data needs to be open. What I mean open, it's not that you give this access to this data to everyone. You give it to as many people as you can. There are, of course, the legal um, constraints around it, but you try to deliver the data to everyone that might need, uh, need them in their daily work. The access to the data should al also be democratized. I think it's really important that this point is uh, sufficiently emphasized because in your organization, not everyone knows how to use SQL or Python to access the data. This data should be accessed by everyone, both the highly technical people and your subject matter experts who are experts in their field, not in the data. So you need to prepare the tools for these people to work on and to, to be able to, to propagate, to be able to, um, to use this knowledge in this data. We start talking about people. I think people, especially at the start when you are introducing the data culture into your organization is really important. I like to define the two key actors in this process. One is the management and the C-level executives who in most cases, use the data already, but they need to share their experience and what they expect from the data and how they use the data with the rest of the organization. On the other hand, when you are introducing the data-driven culture to your organization, you usually select few people, early adopters of the notion, and would like them to help people to spread the idea um, these people are usually called the data champions. So they can both help with technical stuff and the technical difficulties, but also they can spread the knowledge and um, show how they 
use the data in their daily work. Last but not least, the technology. When you want your data to be high quality, when you want your people to have the free, uh, free and um, nice access to the data, you need the technology which will be in place and which will ev uh, enforce this. Uh, enforce. Enforce is a bad, bit, uh, bad word here. Encourage people to use the data in their daily work. When you have all three aspects covered, people will use data in their daily work using the technology and experiment so that they will be able to tell you, okay, from daily experiments, we provide the value for the company. At today's uh, meeting, I would like to focus on the technology. As I'm the software engineer, so the technology is the closest to me. And I would like to tell you a story that how technologies can help you with becoming the data-driven organization. Let's assume that you have the people who are highly experienced in their field and eager to uh, work with the data, but you need to prov uh, proper technologies to provide high-quality high data, on-demand reporting, interactive visualizations, which are which will an, uh, allow them for democratized access. And the one thing that I think is the most common nowadays in social media is machine learning and the models that we can uh, use. So to enrich the data we already have and do the things that were not possible a few years ago, now we can use the machine learning to um, allow them to, to provide value, more value and to make it easier for them to deliver. Before the story begins, uh, I would like to do the, the small uh, mentioning. In PGS, I'm not only the software engineer, I'm also a part of the Innovation Lab activity, uh, which is uh, going through the ideas provided by our clients, and we are prototyping them and iterating through. All the four cases that we will be talking about were created with the same mindset, with the same principles, so that we can iterate quickly in a few weeks cycles and deliver value from the day one. So let the story begin. We have the company. Our company is the small enterprise. A few years ago, it was only the uh, one family company. But after the expansion, after that, the fact that they were doing a really great tools, they, they, are, they are producing hammers and the tools that are needed for uh, professionals around the world to uh, do their daily work, to fix the chair, to build the house. They expanded from 10 people to over 500 employees. They have multiple shops. They made few, quite a big acquisitions for them. And their homogeneous, uh, homogeneous uh, organization grew exponentially in the last few years. When they were starting, everything was done manually. So the data after acquisition of the few companies are all around the house. They have an, two uh, ERP systems. They have multiple uh, e-commerce systems and a really big drive with a lot of Excel sheets. So let's go through the scenarios to implement with the more and more difficulty, but with a more and more value to the company and see how you can iterate, use the tools, select them and move toward being more and more data driven. First of all, imagine that you have the CEO because this, this used to be a family company. So at 8 a.m., the father of the family was sitting, now he's called the CEO, is sitting uh, in front of the uh, whole um, executive group and is reviewing the daily sales report, so the income from the previous day. To, to provide it for the last few years, there was the special person inside of the company which was gathering the data from the different ser ser systems 
and uh, keep it in one uh, spreadsheet. When they started it a few years ago, it took about around 20 minutes to do it from one shop, just download the spreadsheet and present it in a nice way. Nowadays, the meeting is at 8 a.m. He he's waking up at 5 a.m. to prepare this report because the data were, um, because of the multiple countries, the data were created during the night. So he's doing the manual work, reconciling the data between the systems. He's uh, copying and pasting the values. What can be the problems here? One is the long manual labor. We are using around half of a working day for one person only to do the manual labor. Second thing is that we have a lot of errors in this report. Manual work will always come up with the errors. And when you want to look what changed between today and yesterday, you are checking the two different spreadsheets and you are comparing them one by one. It might sound like a, a, a nightmare, but it's, I think it's a great idea to start working towards the good data um, tooling. So first of all, you need to eliminate the manual labor. You can automate the data pipelines using the batch processing. So you are processing data you already have uh, created inside your databases, inside your e-commerce system in ERP, move them into single store which is prepared for the analytical purposes. And then at the end, you need the visualization. We always remember about the democratized access. Everyone should have the access. So the CEO does not need to learn the SQL to encourage your CEO to learn the daily sales report. And be able also to track the historical data. So to see how the data changes, not only day by day, but also month by month. There's also a big pitfall here that we cannot do is that when you are extracting the data from different systems, always remember to keep them alive. Never break the production system, which is selling your hammers only to see this uh, daily report. Okay, so the company introduced it, created the automated pipeline, data store, and visualization. The CEO is happy. He can view them uh, whenever he wants. And it was a great prototype introduced to production and solved some real business problems. But this has, this solves the problems that are scheduled, all the, all the tasks that are scheduled. What about if you want to react to some actions that are going on when the time is of your most important part of the task? Imagine that the buyer is going to your point of sale. He is buying a hammer. When you are when you are selling the hammers, they are leaving the shelf, and you have a same sales system which is cooperating everything inside of it. But it's a huge problem. If you don't have a hammer on the shelf, this person will walk to the another store and buy the hammer from them, not from you. So you are wasting money. You are losing money. There is the other possibility. You can stack the shelves up high and put all the stock you have and order even more or create even more. And then you will be freezing your money. So there is a possibility to solve it. You can... The thing is that it's called the stream processing. When you want to, the information is created at points of sale. You are watching this information, created the rules, and based on the rules you created, when the missing stock alarm is going on, you, have, you can do the reaction. You can create in ERP the stock movement order so that you will stock this a shelf with new hammers from, from the warehouse, or you need to notify the supervisor that some other national action is needed. And this is what the company did. They created a small POC for time-sensitive problem 
with the missing history of events, because the, we will call it event, but it's in fact, it's the information created at the point of sale and the reactions to the alarms. It's quite important that every alarm here is saved back to your analytical store. It will come to be used later. Now, we are all, in both of these cases, we are reactive. We are spotting the, uh, spotting the missing stock faster. Yes, we do. But still, we are spotting it mainly after the fact or reacting not fast enough. Let's try to see why. One of the, this was one of the actions of the company. They wanted to know why their stock is missing. But to find it, they need to dig through all the data they have. Until now, the, we are building a really nice foundation. So we are processing the, the data which were in databases and were all produced from the streaming sources. Now we have a problem of the amount of data and the problem that we want to compute it as soon as possible. We can't wait for the report why the stock was missing for three weeks. And this is the, wor the world of big data. In big data, we have the possibility to create the scalable clusters so that so the, we don't have to put all the work into the single machine. We can split the work between multiple machines using the tools like Spark and then visualize the results. Here we have the great, great possibility to introduce the cloud computing. When we are starting with the prototype, it's worth mentioning that if you would like to have your own big data cluster, Hadoop cluster or Spark cluster, it's, it's costly to set up and it, it costs a lot to maintain. But if you would like to do the pro prototype and the company allows it and you, are, you can use the cloud-based pro, uh, cloud providers, you are able to 3D and cheaply create the cluster. This will allow you to prototype faster and to deliver value quicker. Okay, so there is also one, need, one thing I need to tell you. These big data tools can be introduced back into your stream processing and patch processing pipelines. Thanks to this, you can leverage what you already created and have in your company with the new opportunities and solve the problems that the data, the amount of data or the computation time does not allow you to in the previous steps. And last but not least, I really like this one because the machine learning is the new hot topic. And I, in my opinion, it's worth to mention that for now, we are not only reactive, we are also analyzing the, the, the why this happens that we are missing stock. Now we will be predicting, so looking into the future. So we want to solve the problem of frozen money better. And as you may know that the bad accuracy of this GAD prediction is in big, big company is out of, out of the place. You, the accuracy in the small shop can be good. So that when the family started, they knew how many hammers they are supposed to sell. Now in their 50 shops, it's not possible. So they hired a data science team Data science team usually use uh, the environment to produce the models called Jupyter Notebooks, and they train models. In fact, models are a part of the software which will predict how much they will sell of each um, product next day. Sounds like fun, right? But it's key to say that for data scientists, the creation of the notebook is crucial. But they, they didn't create your value yet. This is only a part of the software that is not plugged in into your system. So it's not giving value. You already have two things, stream processing pipelines and batch pipelines. Now you can use the MLOps tools to integrate 
what you already have. So this part of the software, these models into your ecosystem. Only then the value that the data scientist wanted to give you is delivered. So it's important to host the, and monitor the models and integrate them into your ecosystem. Remember, the models are just a software and a bit of more because there is also a big community around the MLOps, which is get, getting traction now. And there are a lot of challenges that are solved there. Going back to the machine learning and the size prediction. When you have a good prediction, you can, you can predict how many stock you need to have in your shop. So this was the story of the company. They started from the small and incrementally by doing the prototypes, by doing the small pieces of deliverable software, they grew and explored four big parts of the data, um, data business. So they explored the batch processing, stream processing, big data as itself, and, and the machine learning. Let's go with the, some takeaways about the data-driven company and the, as a summary. When you build something, you need to have the purpose in mind. In our case, it was a uh, strong company data culture. So everything we did was with this in mind. I strongly encourage you to, uh, to use the tools with this, uh, with this in mind and have every single one of them to reinforce your strong company data culture. Think of the data as a, the data quality is more important than quantity. Especially if you are in the future want to encourage your stakeholders to use it for the business decisions. It builds trust. And the trust is the base in the in the data. Trust can be only ba uh, only created based on the data quality. Build upon the small business cases. This is nice because when you build small and iterate, rate, as you could see, on the small, really small cases, which was the batch processing, the first step we built the big data was leveraging what we created in this in the first step. And even machine learning will be uh, using the data we have collected. So small business cases are building bigger, bigger cases. Always have a big picture. When, when starting project, I like to, like to first draw the graph, which will uh, show us the end, pick, end of the, our project. This is to be... The main purpose of it is to show where we are going and also to help with the smaller decisions in the meantime. This is why we were able to leverage previous steps and build the strong foundations. This is in both the technology business and also encourage people and train them to be able to use the data. So thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed. And I think we can jump to the questions. Okay. Mm, sure, next time I will use it. Thank you for the feedback. Common milestones when, when you are talking about the business, uh, about the um, data driven company journey. I like to define the, I like to find the smallest possible uh, unit of work to do. So you select one of the pain points, build on this case by case uh, manner and try to define it. So let's say that you want to, you selected some, uh, like we did, we select a simple case, which is the uh, daily sales report. And, uh, and you use it to create the trust in the company. 
this is very really important because may, uh, even if you have a good technology, you will without the trust, it will not be used. So I would go with the first looking for the batch processing or something which is which will be fairly st static. Then look for look for the problems, and then apply the tools. So first of all, something what what is in the past. So things like uh, batch batch processing uh, or the static data. Then go for the something which is a streaming. So the time constraint to solve, and at the end we'll go to the big data uh, and uh, machine learning. To me, machine learning is the last, uh, not the last resort, but I think we should f uh, first use as many tools around without it, and then use the machine learning with the good, solid fun fundament about the data quality and the tools around big data. What are the main usual mistakes company are doing at first steps of this journey? I think that companies are underestimating the data quality of, of the data they have. I have met a company that was integrating source by source uh, and they had a lot of sources. They had a lot of data, but what they were doing with them was um, the user was struggling to understand them. So. There were no curated data. They were not the single. They were not speaking the single language. So some people call the car car, automobile, or the mobile. So you need to have the common dictionary for the for the information you store into the data. The other common mistake I think is that they are jumping directly into machine learning without looking at the most basic things like collecting the data uh, and and uh, collecting the data and visualize, uh, visualizing them. The poor visualization is also one of the problems in many companies. Okay. When should companies build their own on-prem solutions and when to use public cloud tools? I think it's a great question because when you start, the cloud public cloud is a great tool for you, especially for experimentation. For small and medium business is also, in my opinion, great. But if you are the big company, I mean Fortune 500, and you have a lot of data, the cost for pub, uh, public cloud can be really big. What you can do is start small, then move to public cloud, uh, from public cloud to your on-prem solution. But if you know that you have a lot of data and you will have a lot of cases, there are some techniques that you can uh, use on your um, early stages uh, so, uh, be, um, so to make this transition uh, easy. Things like virtualization is a great way of thinking because you will avoid vendor locking. So public cloud delivers you a great uh, service to host your uh, Docker uh, Dockerized applications, but this application can be easily moved back to your on-prem uh, uh, inside of your um, server, server room. So The size and the, the cost, the bill, should be somehow um, tracked, and then you can move. And also, let's remember that we can move, we can go for on-prem solution, public cloud, or just the move the most expensive uh, workloads back to your on-prem and optimize for for this. And if you need something more, you can still use the public cloud. This hybrid approach gives you a lot of flexibility and also makes your bill a lot smaller. Uh, 
Okay. Are the companies that uh, want to become more data-driven designed for greatness in your opinion? If not, what they should watch out to make sure that uh, they take advantage of the data they have? I don't want to say that the, there is that I see that the all companies data driven will be designed for greatness. But what I see is that if you use because the data if you have which are high quality, this is the truth. This is the world. You are not trying to any gut feelings. You are just going with the what's already there. If you use this data to make the good decisions, you will stick to this and you will understand the world better, it will be easier for you and your predictions or the your um, business decisions should be better. So if you know what you are doing and most companies really do know if they have the data, what they are doing, then in my opinion, they have a higher chance for going with uh, the, to become successful. So, I would like to thank you everyone for attending the uh, today's session. And I think in the next slide, there will be the great person who will be presenting. We will be talking about the visualization and how the data can say the story. I encourage every one of you to join our next session. Thank you.